We're here today with Cormac Tobin, who's CEO of Unicare Doc Morris, who have been featured as a European Best Workplace. And in terms of Ireland, they've been on the Irish Best Large Workplaces for the past five years. Cormac, you're very welcome. Small things in a, in a business like this really do matter. And uh, in just talking to people outside, they say that you know everybody's name. How do you actually manage to do that? It's difficult, but if you put as a priority as the leader of the business and these people respond to me and if I show an interest and an empathy with their lives, because most people come into a business and want to do a good day's work. Come in at nine, go home at six, get fairly paid and fairly treated. And if that business shows, I suppose, empathy towards them and wants to understand a little bit about them. People are very proud to speak about it, very proud to speak about their daughter and how they're doing, or their son, or they had a new baby, or they went to Dubai on the holidays, or they're going this. People like to talk about things like that. And if the boss asks them, they really are proud. And if the boss remembers it and brings it back up again, how's your daughter? I know she started school six months ago. They love to tell you how good she is and how she's doing with her results, and she's made new friends and things like that. And it's not easy to remember all the things and it's not easy to remember all the faces and remember all the names. And I, I honestly do get some of them wrong a lot of the time. But I keep trying hard. And as one girl said to me, you always have time to talk to us about things, not just about work. I've worked in people businesses since I was 13. I started with Superquin for 30 years. Worked with Fergal on the shop floor. And parts of my job I used to hate was I was stuck in an office because I couldn't get out there and meet customers and colleagues and engage with them and have a chat and find out things about them and all that. So it's instilled in me. It's, it's part of my character. It's part of what I believe in and my values. And you know what I mean? Businesses talk about putting the customer first. We put colleagues first so that they put the customer first. So in this support office, our job is to make sure our colleagues in our shops are inspired and supported so they look after the customers, so they engage well with the customers. And that's the philosophy of running the company through everything that we do. Because at the end of the day, we're a contact sport. Retail is a contact sport, that's what it is. Mm. And they meet hundreds of thousands of customers every month. And making sure that those people are inspired, feel respected for what they do, feel challenged for what they do, and feel rewarded by the management is important. And to know things about them and talk to them about that. I think, I think the leader in any business shapes the landscape and paints the tapestry for people of how they vision this great place to work. However, parking that aside, that once he's done that, it's very important that it's instilled in all the people who work in the business. Most notably, I suppose the middle management, because they're dealing with most of the people on a day-to-day -day basis in our organisation, because we have 900 people in shops. And to me, having those people living the values that we have set out is vitally important. And we do it in many ways to achieve those things, uh, John. And uh, we do it in many ways to ensure it's delivered in the company. One of the most important parts is constant communication, open, honest and engaging. We have a structure in this company that's very fast moving, but very much where on a weekly basis people are talking to people. They have communication tools to make sure they're kept informed of change and things that are happening. And they have feedback loops, which are very, very important to the business, from our communications group to our in-the-loop communication channels, to all the engage events during the year that we hold at different times where I have to stand up in front of them and explain how well they've performed, where they're going in the business, the things we need to do and get their opinion and get their impression of what they want and what they need. One of the biggest things we find in this organisation that makes sure those values stay alive is the management being around, walking around stores, never being bigger than those people in the front line of the business and engaging with them, asking them questions, trying to find out uh, what they think the business should be doing, how customers are responding to the change and listening to their answers and understanding deeply how we can benefit them with a relationship with customers. So we're living in uh, challenging times, particularly in the, the retail world. Um, oftentimes people, when they think of best workplaces, they think that it's you know, soft and fluffy and easy, but you have a real challenging style. You challenge everybody all the time, particularly with the questions you ask. You know, I don't believe in all the fluffy stuff that goes in the business. I'm very much a guy, and they'll tell you in this business, he's very straight, he's very fair, he's very open, he's very trusting, he's very transparent. If there's an issue to be dealt with, he's going to say it to us, he's going to talk us through it, he's going to help us get through that journey. If we're doing a great job, we'd be very well rewarded. And if we're not doing such a good job, we're not going to get rewarded. And if people need help through performance management to coach them and bring them along, we're going to do it. And I believe in it strongly. I believe in that trust and honesty to people in relationship to their performance and what they need to do. 
also about the businesses, how the business is performing. A number of years ago, like every organization in this country, we hit a brick wall. But we hit two brick walls. A perfect storm happened because we get a remuneration from the government and part of that remuneration is going to be taken away. A huge amount of it, 7 million euros of profitability was being eroded overnight. And we needed to change the business. But we needed to help, tell the people. We needed to get them engaged, involved and empowered to do something about it and feel as if their job depended on succeeding at this. So the big thing that we did with our people was we showed them two plans. Plan A was we need to change. We were legendary. We were brilliant, but we needed to change. The world was changing around us. And part of plan A, we showed them a slide with all the legendary companies who a decade ago ruled their markets. Sony, Kodak, La Zenza Lingerie, HMV Record Stores, Virgin Record Stores, Aer Lingus. The list is endless of legendary companies who ruled their businesses. And we said, we're facing this massive change and we're legendary. And plan A is a number of key elements to it. And we need to engage with you, we need to discuss them, we need to devise a plan. Or else there's plan B. And plan B is the usual thing that a lot of people did. Pay cuts, reduce wages, take bonuses away, change terms and conditions, do all those things. Which hurts people. And people turn off companies and turn off businesses. And we decided to take the more difficult route, which is plan A. That we need to change and adapt and forget about the past because we were legendary. And go and behave like a company who is going to challenge this industry, turn it upside down, rewire it, and offer to consumers new and compelling reasons to do the job. And we needed their help, their involvement. And we really rewrote the rule book for the business, rewrote the rule book for the industry. We're not as popular as we'd like to be with some of our peers in the industry, but that's because we're changing things. And that's because we're behaving like an organization who says, hang on, we can do a better job looking after colleagues and customers and give customers compelling reasons to come back than the indigenous players. And we communicate that strongly, we involve them, we have mechanisms to do it. And they now at this stage are frighteningly good at wanting to change. What we notice in organisations, in the really best workplaces, there tends to be a lot of energy and enthusiasm. Uh, can I ask you, how do you manage to drive that energy and enthusiasm and sustain a great place to work here at Unicare Doc Morris? I think the first thing to me that is vital in energy and business is liberating people's imagination is ensuring they're involved with running the business, ensuring they have the opportunity to partake in what happens. And while giving them guidelines and rules in an organisation, outside of that, tell them, just add to this. These are things we have to do, but if you can just add to this, and innovate and think of ideas and run your stores better and engage with customers better, feel free to do it. Never drop below the standards we set up of business. And liberating that in people's minds that they are the controller, in a way, makes them feel excited about what they do. Let me give you an example. Naomi came to my office one Monday and she showed me a video she'd made on some video spool loop thing on the internet of telling customers about my med, the phase dispensing and how much it could be. And I was just so inspired. It was a young, normal girl working in our business. And I said, right, out of the shop, we'll give you the money, we'll invest 100 grand in your idea and let's go for it. And doing that and giving her the responsibility and the accountability and giving her the platform to be able to achieve it has meant loads more people are coming with ideas. And she's got rewarded for it, and she's the hero. And she's got financial reward, and she's got financial reward for all those people's Christmas parties. And people now feel they're in a company who, if you show energy, if you show loyalty, if you show everything, you'll get rewarded. If you deliver on that, you'll get rewarded more. If you come up with another one, you'll get rewarded more. And there's this now infectious enthusiasm to get this business moving. You met the regional manager in the corridor, look at her, she's rushing to get things done. She knows she's got to do them, she wants to do them, she's proud of it. And that's infectious now in the organisation. And because of the simple things of getting to know what people did right and telling them, saying thank you very much, ringing them up, saying well done your sales figure, me dropping into shops today, this afternoon, because they've done a great performance last week, two of them had record sales. Making sure those things, small things happen across the business. It creates energy, because when I walk out the door, the regional manager rings me sometimes, or the retail director says, Carmen, they're, they're going to improve even more on that sales figure. And that's energy, setting a tone setting a, a leadership quality in a business right across the business. You know, catch people doing something right all the time, reward them, and then deal with things that are wrong quietly, but deal with them and make sure they're dealt with in the organisation. That's our principle, that's how we do it. You, you mentioned about values and the importance of values. In a lot of organisations, when we ask about values, they mention that they're you know, hanging up downstairs uh, at reception. But do they really live them? So how have you created your values? Are they handed down from the top or are they bottom up? 
And do people really use them and live with them when they're making decisions on a daily basis? They are. It was very interesting. When I arrived, they actually just completed the process because they knew they wanted to make a distinguishable difference with people. And it was a bottom-up process. They got everybody together in the organisation, developed great evenings around drawing up the values of the business and getting agreement across the business, what the business should stand for, what its key elements were. And they came up with trust, respect, inclusiveness, pioneering and passionate. And they mean a tremendous amount to me and to everybody in the business. And we constantly refer to them at meetings. We constantly refer to them at seminars, at presentations across the organisation. It's in part of in-the-loop communication. And then everybody who joins the company is brought through them. And I mention to them as well on a consistent basis. When we make decisions, we reflect on them. We always try to reflect. And we make decisions very, very fast. But because it's now engraved in the business, it's part of the process. You don't actually have to go, is that our values? It actually is part between our relationships with our colleagues, our customers. Are, they, are, we, trust, are we behaving in a trust way to the customers? To our manufacturers too. We have to treat them properly too because our manufacturers are our customers when they come into our stores who supply us. So we make sure that it's engraved in everybody's approach. To the performance management, we review them yearly just to make sure everybody's living them. And where there's areas, we will definitely, we're a very open company, we will talk about it, say, look, some of your behaviour doesn't reflect our values of a business, we need to talk about that. And most of the time we can coach and change, and some of the time we have to make other difficult decisions and we're not afraid of those either. Because to me, um, 900 colleagues, they're watching everything we're doing as an organisation and are we living them in the way we treat everybody. And if we don't deal with the issues that a business can have and the difficulties and deal with them professionally, they're watching that. And I don't want 900 people to say this company doesn't live its values, it doesn't deal with its issues, it doesn't treat people with dignity and respect properly because it's not dealing with when there's problems in the business. And then also they don't praise the people properly because it's very easy to go out and praise them as a manager, extremely easy, but you've got to do it all the time and you've got to lavish it on them when they've had success. But then you've got to also deal with when the problems are there. So it's very engraved to this business, it's very important to it. I get upset and disappointed when we're not doing it. Sometimes there's a little bit of a debate in one of our senior meetings because I say this is not how our values should be. And also sometimes when a company doesn't treat us right in our industry as a relationship that way, I get very annoyed with them because I won't tolerate somebody treating this business with disrespect either. So it's quite engraved there. So presently you're going through a, a major transformation of a rebranding process from Unicare to Doc Morris. That, that's a lot of change and in organisations sometimes that can scare people. How have you worked to try and bring people with you and help them through that major transformation? I think the first thing we did was we had a pilot store. We saw this concept and we realised that the market was changing. So we ran a pilot store with some concepts and ideas about how we felt the industry was going to change and the things we needed to be done. We brought our team together after the success of that and got input from them and said, what else could we do? What, are, what else could we achieve? What did we need to look at? And we did customer research to back that up as well, which was important. But remember, customers and colleagues don't always know what they exactly need. Sometimes you have to pioneer down roads that were never done before. And that's what we, partly what we had to do. We showed the whole organisation many legendary companies who ruled their industries because they were fantastic. Best products, best service, best ideas and all that. But they became arrogant and complacent. These companies are disappearing or have disappeared. Virgin Megastore, HMV, CD sales, physical books moving to iBooks now, uh, La Zenza Lingerie, all these organisations, Roche Stores, Woolworths, even Supercrin and the difficulty it has today, many organisations. And then we showed them a slide with companies who weren't in those industries but challenged them and changed them, rewired them, rebooted them with new concepts, new ideas, behaving differently, giving consumers new solutions and new relationships. And in doing that, the consumer didn't know they wanted things in the way they were getting them. They taught them through, they innovated. And these organisations are like Apple's, the organisations like Amazon, eBay's, who are changing industries fundamentally, the Zara's in the fashion, who've come in with fast supply chains, the pennies with great value. So these whole organisations challenged and changed industries and took massive market shares and grew. And we said to them, we don't want to be in the legendary camp. We have a fantastic organisation in Unicare, doing fantastic things but we need today to review it. And we believe Doc Morris, what it offers, is the answer for the new consumers and the new colleagues moving forward. And the beauty of doing that was the engagement, the honesty about how other things had changed, the realisation that our industry was now involved in change and needed to, needed to look at it. Where beforehand, 
there was the notion that all change would bypass it. Are people have accepted? No. And they, they became excited. They became challenged because the success of the pilots were so good that they wanted that in all their shops. They wanted the Doc Morris concept and where it focused on traditional healthcare values, engagement with colleagues, relationship building in a new innovative environment with creative innovative knowledge ways and selling ways and things like that, that they absolutely tremendously wanted to build on the greatness of Unicare with this new brand, new direction, new customer compelling reasons to come to it and all that. And we were humbled by it. But it was communication, it was trust, it was engaging them with what we were doing. But it was showing the reality of changing worlds and being honest about that, being brutal about that. If we don't change like some of those legendary companies don't, we will fall into the same trap in the long term. We will become arrogant and complacent and other people will attack our industry from the outside and give customers new reasons to go to them and we will lose out because everything is changing. And now in the organisation we've got a team of people in the Doc Morris uh, setup who just want to change, adapt, grow, try, different, engage. You know, get technology in. We're going to be launching a load of new technology things into the business next year where the customer can use technology in pharmacy. Wow. But to us that's fantastic. Doc Morris isn't flavour of the month with the industry because it challenges the norms. It upsets the status quo. And lots who have profited in the industry aren't happy with what we're doing. Most notably on value for money and things like that. But our people are proud about it because they realise the consumers want it. And we're changing in a way that the consumers are demanding and they're needing. And uh, they're racing ahead with it. And it's, it's fantastic. You know, you know, the day we presented everybody in the organisation, even though they love Unicare and everything about it, they all wanted to be Doc Morris the following day. They all believed in the direction and were inspired by the vision we had with it and they wanted to partake and drive it. I mean, we're a very simple business. Very, very simple. It's not complex. It's not the most luxurious of businesses at all. We buy things and we sell things. And in the middle, we make a profit. And people come in here, and it is an industry that still is a low-paid industry as regards basic pays because we're in retail and, 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 and things like that. And a lot of people in the industry work very, very hard. It's one of the toughest industries to work. Flexible hours, demands on your time, Sunday working, you know, contact sport, engaging with customers constantly, very change quick, evolving, and we deal with a lot of sick people. So to inspire people, we said small, I suppose iconic things would, would, would inspire people, ideas, concepts, rather than normal management rhetoric. Because the thousand people who work in branches, they want to do a good job for me. They want to be focused on what they want to do. So we use simple symbolisms to help them achieve the objectives in the business. And one part of plan A was to plug a leaking bathtub of money that was disappearing in the business. And what I mean by disappearing in the business, things we weren't doing very well that was costing the business money. Incorrect pricing, we were losing margin. A hole in the bathtub. Uh, lights being left on around the business, a hole in the bathtub with the higher ESB bills. Poor customer service, losing business. So these holes all represent mistakes, errors, bad behaviours in the business where we're losing profit. That we don't just put up our prices, we don't do anything. If we just closed all the holes down, we'd be a very profitable business and we wouldn't have to make any changes to the business. And they were inspired and what they did humbled me by the performance in that year in tackling that. We have a second bathtub called the customer service bathtub, which shows at the taps again, new customers coming in through innovation, ideas, promotions, products, and then all little holes showing how in the business we let them down and they leave. Because it costs you five times more to acquire a new customer as it does to retain a customer. So the bad service could be out of stocks, impolite colleagues, poor service, unavailability of my prescription medicine, late delivery to their homes, untidy stores, poor promotion performances, wrong pricing. And it shows all these little things leaking out and we're losing customers. So every, every week in our memo we have a plug the bathtub for the margin and plug the bathtub for the customer and we focus in on that. That's constantly changing and evolving the business. And during the last two years we've grown our sales, we've grown our profits, We've been very, very sustainable and it gives us the opportunity to invest in the business. And it's icons. We actually have a third one that you don't see, which is the personal bathtub, where we help our colleagues, the accountants do it every week, send them an idea. I can show it to you on the memo if you wish. And it shows them an idea like, have you, after a year, gone out for a new contract for your, uh, say, broadband? Here's the latest pricing. A way to stop it. At lunchtime, are you eating out every day? Listen, you could save 70% by making your own sandwiches. ESB are offering an offer. Did you? So trying to help people plug their bathtub, because I remember engaging with the colleagues as we do all over the country twice a year and I said, look, how many people here when the gas company came along with the electricity have made the big switch? And in audiences of anywhere between 40 and 200 people, about 10% of the audience were only saying it. And I say to them, hang on, we're showing you how to plug our company's bathtub and you're doing a great job. 
you need to plug your own. And then a lady got up on one of them and she was a lady of about 65, nearly retired, down in William Street, Mary Ann's her name. She stood up and she said, well, I've changed my bin, I've changed my phone, I've changed my this, I've changed my that, and I've saved this year 700 euros. And then everybody went, oh, how'd you do that? So we decided to take the idea on here, so we advised them on how to plug their own personal bathtub of losing their finances. We price their insurance every year, do this, do that. Be careful when your Vodafone contract or whatever contract is going to run out, make sure you ring them because they'll automatically put you on another 12 months and you want to change. And it's, our colleagues are delighted with it. We got the money doctor in to help them because we felt that if we're going to have our bathtubs, we need to help them with theirs as part of the arrangement. You help us with ours and we'll help you with theirs. Putting people as your priority in your business. Lots of organisations find that very difficult to do because profit, shareholders, suppliers, customers, all that seems to get a lot more airplay. But if you put those people fundamental as a leader and you drive it hard, all the other things fall into place. I know it's an old cliche and all that, but let me tell you from experience of many years working, running stores for Fergal Quinn, running Fergal Quinn's company firm, working here with people and all that, I have always found is the easiest route to achieving the goals for the shareholders, the suppliers, the customers, that if your colleagues are inspired, liberated and feel engaged in the success of your business, the others just happen automatically. And as a leader, if you're committed to giving that the chance and maybe risking a few things because you do within it, because sometimes there's easier routes, plan B could have been easier for me and my company, and will, willing to work hard at it, your sense of satisfaction as a business leader is enhanced. Your pride is enhanced. And the fact that you've been meaningful to people's lives and they go off and are more successful in other jobs or very proud about our company and how they talk about our company. I think 80, what was it, 84 percent of people said they were proud to work for Doc Morris Unicare. You know, that's fantastic. Now we need to get it to 90. I'm never satisfied, unfortunately. But to me, 84 percent, I don't hear many companies with those sort of figures. And that makes me feel very, very proud. And we're making a fair profit. We're growing as a business and we're successful. I'm very proud. Cormac, thanks a million for your time and for your insights uh, and the help. And hopefully you've inspired others to take on the journey to becoming a great place to work. <laughs>